Hello, lighting people. It's Light Fair 2025, and we found our way to the booth of ETC, and we're here with Lowell, who heads up product management. Lowell, hello, and thank you for joining us. Al, how's it going? Thanks very much for having us. I'll tell you, it's the first day of Light Fair. How's the show going for you so far? You know, this has actually been a really fun show already. Uh, it's been a couple years since we've been at a Light Fair. I'm very excited to be back. Well, glad you're here. ETC is one of the more prominent names exhibiting, one of the more prominent names in controls for a very long time. Some people know that I'm a washed up factory guy myself. I started my career in New York on a controls uh, side of things. Very cool. If there was like 41 Broadway shows at the time, ETC was involved in all 41 shows, well known in theatrical circles. But also for all that time, you folks have been doing a lot on the architectural Absolutely. side. How would you describe the importance and focus of the architectural side of your business compared to your well-known theatrical roots. Yeah, you know, architectural has been something we've been involved in pretty heavily now for almost 25 years. Uh, we started off in the theater, as everybody certainly knows, and figured out, hey, we can control that room that's just next door, uh, and we've grown from there. We have a very strong presence in architectural around the world, including a huge theme park involvement, uh, and we control uh, just pretty much anything. We like light and we like controlling it. And when you consider architectural, how do you define that? Is it everything from a a, a four scene controller in a small conference room to a to a campus and everything in between like how absolutely you know uh, we've been spending a lot of time lately getting into some of the smaller systems ETC took a slightly different path than a lot of other of the architectural control systems normally you start with a small and you build go big we started with a theme park and worked our way back down uh, which has taught us a lot and we've had a lot of fun doing it but yeah we will control just about anything and like spending some time in anywhere there's space and a need for light well we've seen the world go from analog and wired solutions to now wireless and digital solutions. And when you think about the, the way that people are applying different controls, um, you know, we're hearing a lot about LLLC, Absolutely. lighting control. Um, how, and you folks offer systems that, that provide um, you know, more of a hub and then also at the, the fixture level. How do you help your customers decide which type of application is best for their needs? Yeah, you know, I think there's been a lot of things that have led us towards some of these different types of technologies. Uh, the biggest one probably these days is nobody wants to build a big equipment room anymore. So distributors become a lot more popular because of that. Uh, the thing we do is we just like talking with people and figuring out what their needs are. We have an extensive sales partner network, a lot of uh, reps, dealers, consultants uh, that we work with on a regular basis. And we just want to figure out what's the right solution for a particular component. And because of that, we have control lines ranging from our distributed Echo Flex line into our Echo, our Paradigm, and up into our Mosaic line. So trying to make sure that we've got an option for everybody. And it can be tricky to figure out which one you want to, to spend your time in and which one is the right one for you. Uh, so we spend a lot of time just trying to figure out what the sequence of operation is, what the end all result needs to be for the building, and then approach that from, from that direction. Let me spin off that sequence of operations sure. that you just made. Do you find that the, 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 the specifiers that they are providing the project specs with a detailed sequence of operations, or do they need some handholding from you or your representatives in the field? You know, I think it's an area that we all could do a little bit better on, for, even from the manufacturing side, making sure people know how to step into systems. You know, I was talking with one of our, uh, the heads of our, our technical support group, and he said, we used to spend all of our time talking about why does my light not turn on? Now it's why does my light not turn off? These systems have gotten so much more complex that you need to think about it from a different perspective. And what used to be, hey, we need some light, now has so many different interactions. I was talking with a gentleman on the booth today about all of their different needs for uh, their daylight harvesting and their occupancy and sensing. And every part of the country is slightly different. So it's a lot more of that impetus on us as control manufacturers to make sure we can support all of the different types of needs out there. But you're absolutely right. It comes down to, we need to make sure we're talking about what the system needs to be earlier than we have in the past because there's so many different paths you can go. For sure. And, and and taking that back to your, your theme park statement as well and some of the other exciting applications you folks get involved with, we've seen, you know, DMX 512 is a staple of theatrical Absolutely. control. Um, but we've seen that, and I think there's a term, some people love it, some people don't, but the architainment, architainment world. Yep. Um, th so w when you think about how DMX 512 has seeped into architectural, is it, does it belong there? And if so, how do you apply it? You know, I think that one of the strong parts about DMX is it is probably the premier color control protocol. When you need to get really refined into those individual emitter colors or that fade or metameric control that you want to achieve, it's going to be really superior. But at the end of the day, it's a heavier protocol. You need to have a little bit more knowledge. You need to have some more sophisticated cable. So I think there's a, a mix and match. You know, it, it, it goes back to our sequence of operation control. What are we trying to do? If it's a ballroom that we're gonna turn on some light, we're gonna turn on some light, maybe not. But we want that color chasing cove? 
Absolutely. So I think DMX isn't going anywhere anytime soon. There, we have definitely have seen a zero to 10 in a bigger surge, Dolly in a bigger surge, uh, SACN or any of the Ethernet based protocols. Uh, at the end of the day, we love protocols and we'll play with sort of however you want to play. And that, that leads me to my next question, which is, I mean, there, there's so many different flavors of these uh, protocols, yeah. and then some manufacturers have their own proprietary ones, and there's an argument for and against that as well. Um, what, is, what is your stance on the, the protocols, and where do you see things going from a protocol standpoint, 5, 10, 15 years from now? Are we going to add a longer menu of protocols, or are we going to start cutting it down to the ones that matter most. You know, there's a funny saying in the controls world, if, if you don't like a standard, wait a while, there'll be another one. Um, but what we really, we, if there is a standard protocol, we, we love standard protocols. It just brings everybody in as a standard playing field. Make sure that we know how we're going to talk. What do you expect from me? What do I expect from you? That being said, as I said, these systems are getting more complex. We're going to implement a protocol that is best for our customer. It's going to make it the easiest. We will always try to make sure that's an open protocol, but there are some things that just make sense to talk in a, in a proprietary. So, you know, one of the, the great advantages for us is we've had the, the honor to sit on a number of different protocol committees. Uh, some of them have gone exceedingly well. Some of them take longer than we all would like to get ratified. Uh, so if given the opportunity, we'd love to play in an open world, but there are definitely some places that proprietary just kind of works better for us. You know, the, um, the, the industry, from a control standpoint, there used to be kind of a short list of trusted names. Sure. And today, there's a long list, with many of them also being trusted. <laughs> so uh, if, if, if we're talking to specifiers, lighting designers, and electrical engineers who specify architectural lighting controls, how do you convince someone who's really comfortable with their standard two or three that they like to use, and how do you convince them to, to kind of take ETC architectural controls for a spin? How do you get them out of their old habits? Yes. I mean, at the end of the day, one of the things ETC is known the best for is our 24 hour a day, seven day a week tech support. Uh, you can pick up the, the phone right now, call us and someone will answer that phone. Uh, and we have really prided ourselves on that level of support, that level of dedication to our customer. Some of that does definitely come from our theatrical roots. The show must go on is a common phrase around ETC. Uh, so I think that's you know, one of the, the strongest points. Past that, I think one of the areas that we have spent a huge amount of time with, which is really becoming advantageous to the architectural world, is color control. You know, if you look at what we have done in the theatrical world and how we have brought that level of sophisticated color control into the architectural world, color quality, color fidelity is our bread and butter. Uh, and so I think that's, that's an area that we have spent a lot of time. But at the end of the day, control is kind of control. The ability to turn something on and bring it on, you know, the, the Elements that we have in our theatrical world transcribe directly into our architectural world. And we've had a, a really great success doing that and we will continue to really enjoy it. Well, you know, as, as we uh, observe the industry at Inside Lighting, we, we keep tabs on different companies and certainly we're hearing your name more and more in architectural circles and of course uh, presented at a positive light. So congrats on the, the great legacy you folks have built. Thank you, it's our 50th it. year. 50th, yeah, ETC celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. That's a long legacy. Yeah, it's a long legacy. We're honored to continue it, and there's a lot of institutional knowledge, which has been great. I bet. Well, congrats on 50. Here's to another 50. And thank thanks you very for much. joining us today, Lowell. Absolutely. Enjoy the show.